What's up everybody? Welcome to the Stocks Channel. My name is Corey and today in the stock market we had a very volatile day with a huge gap up and then we did start to see sellers at resistance. With the earnings season officially upon us, I'm giving you everything you need to pay attention to in the price action today. First up, let's take a look at the S&P 500 SPY ETF. So let's crack open this chart and see what's going on in the stock market today. All right, all right. So today on SPY, we're up 1.17%. And we did see that huge gap up open from Friday's close. And we gapped up all the way to this resistance zone around 375 up to about 378. Now, this is going to be very critical resistance because the bulls will need to blast through the previous daily high to get the bull breakout. And then just above 378, the next critical resistance is going to be right here at the resistance trend line and negatively sloping 50 EMA at 382. So there is going to be a ton of resistance to the upside. And then of course we do have the big bad bear still waiting right there at SPY 390. So while we are still in this downtrend and while SPY is still below 390, we are still looking for the possibility of lower highs and lower lows. And we do want to start looking at the possibility of that five wave structure to the downside that we were talking about on last week's video, which tells us that we are currently going down in a five wave structure and it does appear that we did nail the bottom of wave three and now we're bouncing in wave four and eventually wave four should find resistance somewhere around this resistance zone and then we could still make that final wave five lower, which could take us down to SPY 340s. Now, this is the valid market structure while we have the downtrend and while SPY is still below 390. So even in the event we rallied all the way up to the big bear at 390, we could still get this next leg lower. So do not completely rule out the possibility that this downtrend has not yet completed. Now we have earnings season and anything is possible. And that's why we always let the price action do all the talking. So while this is the expected market structure, we're never going to get sold on the idea that this has to be what happens. So for that reason, you can use critical risk levels on SPY right here at 367. If SPY is above 367, you can stay on this bull if you choose to do so. But immediately when we break down below that support, you immediately need to be getting ready for that next leg lower that could take us down to retest the lows just below 350 or make a brand new low right around 342. As I always tell you, this is a downtrend until it's not and I have no problem waiting until the price action proves it to us by breaking out of the downtrend and confirming that the downtrend is reversing into something of an uptrend that we can start getting more bullish about. Now in the very, very near term, we do have a higher low, higher high situation but as you can tell on the daily chart, we still haven't taken out SPY 378. So in the very short term, and I'm talking about an hourly chart here, we do have a small uptrend, but you have to remember the larger term trend is still lower highs and lower lows until we start getting higher highs on this daily chart. So watch that extremely critical resistance from about 378 up to about 382. And then of course, the critical risk level that defines this bear market is now up here at SPY 390. As soon as we break down below 367, look for a retest of the lows at the weekly 200 simple moving average at 358, the previous daily low right around 349, and then the brand new lower low would be right around 342. Know all of these critical levels and the price action trigger to go lower will be the break below 367, and the price action trigger to go higher will be the break above 378. On the NASDAQ 100 triple Qs, we were up 0.79% today, and the triple Qs gapped all the way up to the top of the resistance trend line, which is this downtrending channel that we find the triple Qs walking down lower in, and we could see a very clear rejection at that level, which was right there at 277, which was just below the gap fill at 279. Bears are going to continue to show up at resistance as long as we have downtrends, and we still do have a very strong downtrend in the triple Qs. So what the bulls will need to do going into tomorrow is they will need to break out of this downtrend which is going to require a daily close back over 276 and then the bulls will need to fully close the gap just below 280 and then get a daily closing higher high which is going to require a break above 282 to 284. The 50 EMA is negatively sloping and it's going to be right around that resistance range so that is going to be the critical resistance the triple Qs will need to break above to start breaking the downtrend. The big bad bear in the triple Qs is waiting up there at the critical risk level, which is the triple Qs levels of 293, and that is going to be where the bulls need to battle the bear to take control of this market. Remember, as long as we're in this downtrending channel, it's possible we could still make a lower low going into midterm election volatility, and that will be the breakdown below 258, 
for a brand new lower low price target right around 250. So again, these are downtrends until they're not. So let the price action prove it to you by breaking out of resistance. And then you can start to get more bullish that the downtrend is possibly reversing. On the Dow Jones, we were up 1.13% today. And as you can tell, the Dow Jones gapped up outside the upper Bollinger Band and over the negatively sloping 50 EMA. So it was just getting way too far overextended to the upside. And that invited bears in to short it all the way back down to support at 303. Now I will tell you in the Dow Jones, this does look like a confirmed double bottom breakout because we did double bottom off of that support just above the gap fill, which was right there at 287. And today we did get a close above the neckline at 303, which is a bullish breakout. So for that reason, as long as the Dow Jones is above 303, there is no reason to be bearish in the Dow Jones because this is a very bullish pattern with a very bullish breakout. Dow Jones above 303 can come all the way back up to the critical risk level at 312 and possibly even test into the gap close at around 320. So there is a lot of potential upside in the Dow Jones, but we do need to acknowledge that the Bollinger Bands are not currently allowing for a lot of upside price to action. So it will very likely be a slow climb higher for the bulls with lots of resistance from the bears at the 50 EMA at 308 and the critical risk level at 312. But but as you can clearly tell, the Dow Jones is leading the way higher, but this is still possibly going to be a lower high before the next lower low because we are still below the critical risk level at 312. So that is by far the levels the bulls will want to break above and the sooner the better. To the downside, watch for that support level at 303 because the bulls will be getting a lot weaker if that support level fails. And then we'll be looking for support at a retest of the breakout, which is going to be right around 299. On the Russell 2000 IWM ETF, we were up 1.19%. And again, the Russell 2000 is looking a lot like the Dow Jones trying to get a double bottom breakout off of the retest of the June lows just below 164 but that is going to require a daily close above the neckline at 176. And as you can tell from the candle, that is exactly where we were rejected today on IWM. This is a bull breakout above the resistance trend line, but it's not yet a bull breakout above the previous daily high. So look for that next bull breakout above 176 and then above 178. And then we could get a full measured move higher, which could take us all the way back up to fill the gap at 188. Downside support will be 173 and the 20 simple moving average at 170. On RK, we were up 1.62% today as RK found resistance right there at the negatively sloping 20 simple moving average at $38. And we did close back down below the resistance trend line, but we did hold the support just above 36. This is very obviously a strong downtrend in the ARK ETF and we did make the brand new 52 week lower low. So by far we are still in the bear market in the ARK ETF. To get out of the bear market, we'll need to close back over 41 and then get all the way back above resistance at 43 and 47. So this is a very strong downtrend with very, very critical support down here at the previous daily lows at 33.7. On the VIX, we were down 2.71% as we see the VIX getting crushed back down below the 20 simple moving average for quite some time because the last time we had that was back on September 9th but we do still have the VIX above 30. This is starting to look like the VIX is consolidating into a wedge, so we're very likely going to see a very volatile breakout in the very near future, and the bulls will need the VIX back down below 28, and the bears will want to keep the VIX above 30 to keep the market very volatile and increase the chances of a very volatile VIX spike that could send us into capitulation. So watch the VIX very closely because while it's above 30, it's going to remain a very volatile market. And do remember that volatility does work in both directions. On Bitcoin, we are currently down about 1% and Bitcoin is still trading between the trading range of 19,000 to 20,000. So there are no breakouts to report just yet. The bears need to break down below 19,000 to get to the next price target at 17,000 and the bulls need to break above 20,000 to get to the next target higher at 22,000. Wait for the breakout and then you'll know exactly where to trade it in either direction. But as you can tell, there is a lot of demand for Bitcoin at 19,000 and that is why this support level is not breaking down. On Amazon stock, we were up 2.26% today and Amazon did gap up above and fill the gap right there, right around 120 and instantly found resistance. It came back down to support right around 115. As you can tell, we did hit the next leg lower price target at 106 and that is where we found support because we were getting outside the lower Bollinger Band but now that we're getting a bounce, it's possible we could see a continuation of the selling. You're going to want to wait to get bullish until we can get a close back over 121 and break above this resistance trend line. And then you'll be wanting to get a lot more bullish for the gap fills at 126 and then the gap fill at 134. However, as long as we're below 121, it's still possible we get rejected from resistance and still come down to retest 106. 
and you will want to watch for support at 113 and 115. On Microsoft stock, we were up 0.41% today, and we did officially hit the price target at the gap fill at 244, so we can delete the arrow and the gap, and we can see we instantly found resistance at that level. So with Microsoft failing to break out, that does beg the question, are the bulls ready for this breakout, or was this just a false attempt and a failure to break above resistance? So that level on Microsoft that the bulls need to break is still right here at 242, and then the next critical resistance area will be 249 and 252. To the downside, look for support right here at 237, 232.8, and the previous closing low at 225. On Nvidia stock, we were up 0.66%, and Nvidia found resistance right there at the resistance trend line, which was that level at 124.5, and this negatively sloping 20 simple moving average. The bulls need to break above 124 to get back up to resistance at 135, and above 135, we should get the bullish breakout to close the gaps in the 140s. Downside support is going to be right here, right around 120 and 115, and the previous daily closing low just below 112. On Tesla stock, we were up 0.38%, but Tesla did have that gap up open right there near that price target at 231 and instantly found sellers and came right back down to support right around 219. As you can tell, Tesla is teetering on the edge of this very critical support range between 206 and 209, and if that level does break down and fail to hold as support, you're looking for the next leg lower all the way down there at 186.5. If the bulls can get a bounce off 219, look for that price target at 231 and resistance at 238. And as you could tell, this negatively sloping 20 simple moving average is rapidly declining, which is also going to offer as resistance. On Apple stock, we were up 0.94% today and Apple is right back to the top of the resistance trendline and downtrending channel right there at 145 with that critical resistance being 145 and 147 and then above 147, we still have critical resistance at 150. To the downside, look for support right here at 143 and 138 and then below 138, we will likely go down and close the gap at 133. We're still on a downtrend until we can get back over 147 and 150, so continue to respect the fact that Apple is still in a downtrend. On the financial sector, we were up 1.6% as the financials are back above the 50 EMA and right there at the top of the Bollinger Band, which is going to need to expand to allow for more upside price action. Look for that resistance zone right around 32.8 and possible support at 32.3. The industrials were up 2.41%, closing back up near the top of the Bollinger Band and just below the 50 EMA with critical resistance right around $90. The healthcare sector was up 0.56%, gapping back up above the upper Bollinger Band and still closing above the 50 EMA, so starting to develop a bull trend. The energy sector was up 0.87%, continuing to find resistance right around $83, but still developing a bull trend the longer it can stay above 78. You can stay bullish as long as we're above 78, but you instantly need to get risk off if we break down through that support for the gap fill to the downside at 73. So jumping back over to the S&P 500, this is going to be a very volatile couple of weeks because there are a lot of critical earnings reports and we are still in a very strong downtrend. So wait for the price action to confirm the downtrend is ending before you get overly bullish. There's going to be a lot of FOMO around earnings season and every time you see a stock gapping up and running without you, you're going to want to chase it, but I strongly suggest you don't do so. Don't bother worrying about what you missed, have a trade plan, and be very disciplined around earnings season because it's going to be very emotional if you don't have a plan and you're just chasing things you missed. Remember, patience, discipline, and risk management are the only ways you're ever going to become a profitable trader, so know your risk and reward ratios, know your support and resistance levels, and then do whatever the price action is telling you to do. Also, don't forget that I have Bank Trade Alerts, which is an algorithm-driven trade alert service that sends you all of your buy and sell alerts directly via email and text message and only trades the ETFs TQQ and SQQ. You can learn more about Bank or subscribe by clicking on the link in the description of this video. If you're looking to become a better price action trader, consider joining the Stocks Channel Trading Discord community where you get access to all of my intraday updates and analysis. You can find out how to join the Stocks Channel Discord by clicking on the link below. So thank you for watching everybody. I hope you're crushing this market. And as always, I will see you in the next episode.